up a little bit. Uh, Ed, why don't we start with yours? With my dig? Yeah. Okay, I'm that, super that, prepared. Yeah, yeah, that that that, mo that monster dig you did which is pretty much an article. I know, right? Everybody's like, "Why aren't you just, you know, putting this in an article?" Yeah, I know. <laughs> she's working on that. She's working on that. Yeah, I know. She's getting there. But that, but 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 that was a pretty amazing dig, and you you put it together pretty quick. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I um. I didn't really expect for it to lead into so many different things. I was just following um, Epstein's early days and his early connections, but I also kind of wanted to follow the money and see where that went. And so um, I kind of looked into the Greenberg connection, which basically, so Alan Ace Greenberg is or was, you know, the head of Bear Stearns, but so let me, let me back up a little bit. So mid seventies, Epstein, you know, he drops out of school. He gets this job as a math and science teacher at the Dalton school. And that's how he's introduced to Ace Greenberg uh, because apparently he was tutoring Greenberg's son at the time and then dating his daughter, Lynn. So that apparently is why Ace Greenberg brought him on to Bear Stearns. I don't know. It just seems a little odd to me that that was the case. Uh, but <laughs> not only that, but he becomes mentored by them, by Ace Greenberg and James Kane, which was like the second in line, who eventually became the, the one that took over after Ace. Not only that, but in four years, he rises to limited partner, which is just a rung beneath full partner. And I thought that was bizarre, too. Like people take four a, whole, years. a whole lifetime oh, yeah. to, uh, to get to that level. And he rises in four years. He becomes Ace's golden boy, quote unquote. This is from um, Filthy Rich, um, which is a book that was written about Epstein. So he becomes Ace's golden boy in charge of running numbers, basically, for a select group of Bear Stearns' wealthiest clients, like the elite of the elite at Bear mm -hmm. Stearns. And this includes, and it only names one client, Seagram CEO, Edgar Bronfman. Red flag. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've done like two or three digs on Edgar Bronfman. I mean, not only the, um, the Nixvium connection, obviously, uh, with his daughters being involved in Nixvium, but Bronfman was, you know, president of the World Jewish Congress, which has connections <coughs> to Mossad through David Kimchi has connections to Mossad through the mega group, which also, you know, has been alleged to have been involved in some uh, Israeli intelligence operations as well. Um, so the fact that the only known client of Jeffrey Epstein's at Bear Stearns um, was Edgar Bronfman definitely raises red flags and makes me wonder who else were his clients, which we don't know because of course they're so secretive uh, <laughs> about the client list. But Vicki Ward came out. Uh, she is a she's a, a journalist, an investigative journalist, and she's done a lot of you know reports on Epstein over the years. You know, going back you know more than a decade, and interviewed uh, some of his friends and his inner circle, who have said that Jeffrey Epstein told them that he basically was a headhunter for governments and very rich people recovering their money that was either lost or stolen, okay? And they named, according to Vicki Ward, they named one client, and that was Adnan Khashoggi. So Vicki Ward only recently came out um, making this claim about this new revelation about Adnan Khashoggi being one of Epstein's clients. We don't know exactly the time frame. We just know it was in the 80s, I believe the early 80s. So this may have been possibly while he was at Bear Stearns or perhaps after Bear Stearns when he left Bear Stearns. But we do know, uh, according to Vicki Ward, that he was a client. So if, if you put into context the time frame, well, first of all, let me back up. So Ace Greenberg, not a whole lot of damning information about him in particular. Uh, he was part of this elite group of bankers called Kappa Beta Phi, uh, which they're kind of like a, a fraternity. So I did a little digging into them. Uh, it's 
Yeah, it's a little shady, you know, a uh, bunch of bankers getting together once a year, dressing in drag and making, you know, dirty <laughs> jokes and stuff. That's about right. it. That I can find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, d- I, d- I don't want to know what, um, <laughs> what's going on in Alpha Kata Pi or whatever the hell I they want to call it. I saw that in themselves. a movie once. What, what, is, what is with the whole drag part to that? I don't know. It's bizarre. But so, yeah, Ace Greenberg and James Kane were are both members of Kappa Beta Phi. Ace also has strong ties to Israel. I'm not implying there's any, you know, <laughs> intel relationship going on there, but definitely was has strong ties to the Bronfman family and to contributions made to different to different Jewish organizations and in, uh, in particular the UJA. So but moving on, so the time frame is really important. When Epstein was at Bear Stearns and then later, like after he'd just left Bear Stearns, during that time, so 76 through 80, 81 ish, um, Epstein managed finances for the elite of the elite, such as Edgar Bronfman. But um, also in 76 through 77, uh, George H.W. Bush was the director of the CIA. And then from 77 to 79 was the director of the Council of Foreign Relations. And then he went on to be VP. It's always all about the timelines, I'm telling you. Exactly. So during this time, the uh, Medellin cartel, uh, they were doing a major drug uh, trafficking operation of cocaine up through Florida and into other parts like Louisiana, Arkansas. And they were working with the CIA and the Mossad. It was a gun running and drug trafficking that was going on. And uh, it got uncovered later in like 86, 87 ish. Uh, And then they kind of built this story around it of basically they were trying to help uh, the, uh, the Contras overthrow the government so that's why they were allowing the drug trafficking and gun running Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. but so but really the cia and Mossad were involved in this major drug trafficking and gun running operation going on in the late 70s and all through the 80s okay so makes me just wonder okay if if epstein is running numbers for the elite of the elite at bear stearns including bronfman who else is he running numbers for we only know his other client is adnan khashoggi and Guess what? Adnan hmm. Khashoggi was a key player in the Iran Contra affair. Um, once it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> once once it came out uh, in the mid '80s, he was the the guy, the arms dealer who negotiated the arms deal. So, um, just wondering who else um, uh, Epstein was running numbers for at Bear Stearns was some of the money from the Iran uh, Contra or the, the dr- drug and gun running that was going on? W- were they washing money is my question. So basically there's a, you know, um, a lot of information that I go into on this dig about the Iran-Contra. Um, it looks like from, from the circumstantial evidence that we have that what they were doing is they would launder the money and it was billions, you know, like $350 billion, you know, wow. that they had to wash. And they would use these smaller banks that would be bought by the larger banks. And we have one scenario where we've tracked it with, you know, BCCI was the bigger bank that, um, that it was attached to. Another scenario where AIG was the, the, the institution that was connected to a smaller bank that was run that was doing the money laundering. We know Adnan Khashoggi was the the arms dealer that was involved in Iran Contra. Um, he also got busted later for racketeering and fraud. And at the same time, in those early eighties and and late seventies, there were several honeypot schemes. So so Epstein wasn't the first uh, one. He's just the, you know, one of many. You know, this is really just more of like a grand scope of Epstein's role in a much larger syndicate. Um, you know, there was, you know, the Franklin scandal, the, you know, there was this, uh, you know, Craig Spence 
the call boy ring. There was the uh, Catholic Covenant House. All these things were going down and it was all part of this larger, grander scheme. You know, the same, the same players basically behind the scenes were involved in all of these things. While this drug running and gun running is going on and money is getting washed, that was like 70s, 80s, early 80s, Epstein gets involved in this little issue with his client, Edgar Bronfman. Uh, so there's a deal that kind of prompts the SEC to investigate, and they determine that it's insider trading, and then Epstein immediately resigns. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it was the deal was with, with Edgar Bronfman, Epstein's client. So then... Epstein leaves Bear Stearns and kind of gets this new mentor. His name is Stephen Jude Hoffenberg. Well, Stephen Jude Hoffenberg claims that Epstein told him that he had left Bear Stearns in 81 after it was discovered he was uh, d discovered doing illegal operations. And he doesn't really get into what those illegal operations were. So this Stephen Jude Hoffenberg, <laughs> he gets busted for doing a uh, Ponzi scheme and he gets 20 years for doing it. And Epstein, he claims was part of this Ponzi scheme and uh, that Epstein had all these shell corporations. And, and so it was, it was, you know, Epstein was a, a total co-conspirator, but he, Epstein denies the allegations and he walks away. So now we have two scandals uh, that Epstein's walked away from. The Bear Stearns one with Edgar Bronfman, and now this uh, $450 million Ponzi scheme with, with Hoffenberg, one of the largest Ponzi schemes in U.S. history. He walks away from that. So I'm wondering, how does this guy get away <laughs> with everything? He's got to know people, right? Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So then he goes and he starts these, uh, you know, he starts Jay Epstein Co., and that's out of the Virgin Islands. He's got the house in, um, you know, in Florida, Palm Beach, Florida. And this is the same stomping grounds as that CIA uh, and Mossad drug and gun running operation. So to me, it just seemed really super convenient that he's got an offshore company that could easily launder things. Oh, um, yeah, because he's a puppet. <laughs> exactly. So, um, many, so many coincidences. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure it's got nothing to do with nothing. Uh, so, <laughs> so then we get into Mena, Arkansas, because the, the drug and gun running didn't stop it in Florida. It went on into Mena, Arkansas, which was surprisingly Bill Clinton's area while he was governor. And so this major operation is going down in, in Arkansas at the same time. And, you know, there have been multiple whistleblowers talk about this. Larry Nichols to Terry Reed, uh, written books, done interviews, et cetera, come out speaking at length about this operation that happened down in Mena, Arkansas, where they were running a hundred million a month in drug trafficking. And they had to wash all that money. Well, who's washing it? So like I said, they were using these smaller banks that were bought out by larger banks. So the smaller banks, if so, if anybody got busted, it was going to be the smaller banks, right? Mm -hmm. So here's an example. Um, they had a, a little bank called, uh, it was Coral Re. Okay. Well, Coral Re was actually founded by AIG. And the interesting little side story about the name of Coral Re is that uh, it's alleged to have been named after Coral Baca, the wife of the Medellin warlord um, at the time. So anyways, there's this shady $60 million deal through Clinton's AFTA, which he was funneling all this, apparently, allegedly funding, funneling all this drug money through AFTA. And uh, so the sh shady $60 million deal goes down involving Coral Re, which is owned by AIG. And Col Coral Baca um, was allegedly claiming to be legal counsel for AIG at the time, even though she wasn't even a lawyer. Um, so it was clearly a sure. case where people at the time we're up and, you know, we're really investigating because they were like, they, they knew there was a major drug trafficking situation going on in Mena. And uh, this was another huge red flag when they saw this, 
um, the steel go down. It was clearly a, a case of money laundering. So that leads to AIG because now we know AIG is in on it, right? And mm -hmm. so you look at the, uh, the head of AIG at the time, that's Maurice Hank Greenberg. Now, this book, The Conspirators, that I read, um, it's from an insider, uh, someone who ran Black Ops um, for uh, Iran-Contra. He claims that Hank Greenberg of AIG and Ace Greenberg of Bear Stearns are cousins. I cannot find any supporting you know, evidence. I've done the research. I've looked at their family tree. I've gone back three generations. I can't find the connection. But hmm. there, there's circumstantial evidence to support it. They're similar in age. They're, you know, they, they both rose to power, you know, similar time frames, both titans in their, you know, particular fields. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a possibility, a strong possibility, but I can't find it other than um, Al Martin's claims. Hank Greenberg's very interesting. He was the predecessor at AIG of Cornelius van der Star, who was both a businessman and an operative for the OSS, the Office of Strate Strategic Services, basically the CIA before it was the CIA. Mm -hmm. And um, so Cornelius van der Star is the um, uncle, the great uncle of none other than Ken Starr, one of the attorneys behind Epstein's 2008 non-prosecution agreement. Um, so there's always these little connections. Epstein keeps Big coming back up in this, in this <laughs> larger, grander story. Epstein keeps popping back up. AIG seems as deep state as it can get. Maurice Greenberg, he is, he was, okay, sorry, I had to read, I'm, I'm reading. He was president of AIG. Waiting. <laughs> I had to scroll. <laughs> so, Look, you're, you're making a lot of mistakes, Edge. No, Isn't you're Hank a lot of Maurice? I'm confused. Isn't Hank Maurice? Yes. Yeah, so his name's actually Maurice, but he goes by Hank. Okay. They, all, they all have nicknames. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if they just like to make it more confusing for people. Absolutely. They like to misspell the names, too. Mm -hmm. And they like to choose names. They'll change their names, and they'll make it um, like a real simple name like John Smith or... Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, or a famous name. That's so exactly what it things out. It makes it 10 times trickier to get to the bottom of it. All right. So Maurice Hank Greenberg, who is named, he named himself Hank after a famous baseball player. Corey, so you are correct. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was the president of AIG. He was a candidate in 95 to become director of the CIA. He was the vice chairman and director of the Council on Foreign Relations, and he was the director of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. So this guy is super well connected, deep state ties everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So not only that, and not only the Ace Greenberg connection, but also the Ken Starr and the Cornelius Starr connection. Um, we've got Henry Kissinger, who chairs both AIG International uh, Advisory Boards and several other boards connected to AIG. And then we have Kroll. So in 93, AIG became co-owner of this spy agency. It's a private spy agency called Kroll. And Kroll was notorious back in the 80s as the CIA for Wall Street. After the 93, 93 World Trade Center bombing, Kroll got the security contracts on all of the buildings, coincidentally, uh, mm -hmm. that were blown up and destroyed in 9-11. Okay. Imagine that. Yeah, so uh, not only that, but Hank Greenberg's son is Jeffrey. So Jeffrey Greenberg was the CEO of Marsh and McLennan. He is also a member of the Council on Foreign, Rel Foreign Relations. And him and his dad were huge fans of the Bushes, like major, major donors to the Bushes, mm -hmm. all their campaigns. Um, there's more connections with them and the Bushes. I just didn't have time to go into all that. But so in 98... Yeah, it would have become a 100-point thread. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so in 98, AIG invests $1.35 billion in this company called Blackstone. AIG, Blackstone, and Kissinger Associates partner together 
Then in October 2000, Blackstone Real Estate purchases the mortgage of World Trade Center 7. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, The plane that crashed into the North Tower on 9-11 crashed directly into the two floors where Marsh and McLennan uh, were located and destroying all kinds of evidence. And Kroll and Associates, which McLennan, Marsh and McLennan and AIG are associated with, uh, was the, the company, the private security company holding the contract there uh, at that building. So this guy, Richard Grove, he comes out in 06. He is a whistleblower who worked for this company called Silverstream. And Silverstream runs these internet trading platforms. They build them. And at the time, uh, Marsh had contracted them to create this software for them that was going to give them this connectivity between Marsh and AIG uh, that was so streamlined. It was going to be like the first two companies on the planet to have this kind of software. And Hmm. Silverstream was contracted to do this and set it up in the World Trade Center 1 and the deadline was July 2001. Okay, so, you know, two months, two months prior. Yeah. So, so this guy Grove, um, he's working for Silverstream. He notices the $7 million overpayment between Marsh and Silverstream. And he tells his higher ups and his higher, higher ups are like, you need to shut up, man. You need to shut up. <laughs> they even ho- offer him hush money. But, uh, he doesn't, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't stop there. He decides to contact Marsh and, and let him know, look, I have evidence that there's some kind of shady deal going on here. You guys overpaid us $7 million. So Marsh summons him to meet with them and bring all of his evidence to the World Trade Center on 9-11. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. He, oh, boy. He gets stuck in traffic. And I haven't wa- heard this one before. This is interesting. And he watches as the planes, you know, crash into the buildings. Wow. And so, <clears throat> anyways, there's this inter- really interesting interview that he does. Um, I've got it on my thread. I don't, you know, have to play that for you now. But it's super interesting making all those connections. <laughs> CIA, Mossad, you know, the Bushes, AIG. Uh, uh, Iran-Contra. Oh. Everything. Yeah, all of it is seen. Even it's Enron, safe. there was, you know, Enron. there's there's a bunch of bunch of connections, man. I mean, I, I can't, I don't have time to get into it now, but it does all connect. Um, and little little bits and pieces here and there <laughs> go back to Epstein. Like he's just this tiny player in a mm-hmm. much grander. That uh, happens to be yeah. in the right place at the right time every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. All right. So here's, yeah. an, here's another interesting connection. So 9-11 hijacker, Mohammed Atta. We touched a little bit on this, um, you know, last week. Well, he was trained originally at Huffman Aviation. So that school was funded by a guy named Wally Hilliard with Oryx Corp. And Oryx was founded by Epstein's client, Adnan Khashoggi, who always keeps popping up in these stories, mm-hmm. uh, along with the Sheikh Kamal Adam, who was the director of Saudi intelligence at the time. So then... Muhammad Atta goes and hones his skills at Florida's Lantana Airport out of Palm Beach County. And both of these airports have a long history of criminal activity connected to the CIA and Mossad. And coincidentally or not, Jeffrey Epstein's <laughs> assistant, Nadia Marcinkova, uh, was also trained out of Lantana Airport at around the same time as Atta. Uh, so what kind of trafficking may have she have been involved in? Uh, what kind of jobs may she have been doing? I don't know, but it's just all these little coincidence at coincidences adding up. So you fast forward to the 2008 financial crisis and it's all the same players. So we have the Bush administration. We have Ace Greenberg's Bear Stearns. We have Maurice Greenberg's AIG. They're deemed too big to fail. They get a $210 billion government bailout through the Bush administration. By way of the Paradise Papers, we now know Epstein's Liquid Funding Limited 
was heavily invested in Bear, Bear Stearns subprime mortgage-backed securities, which is exactly the type of securities that is what made Bear Stearns spark the 2008 financial crisis. So my question is, was the financial crisis manufactured? Were these deep state players using shell companies like Epstein's liquid funding to spark that uh, financial crisis? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all the big players, you know, AIG, Bear Stearns, et cetera, get bailouts. Well, here's another connection. So we have Blackstone, who was tied to this whole 9-11 thing with AIG and Kissinger. They have a, a spinoff company called BlackRock. Out of, it's a Cayman Island bank, and it's tasked to evaluate the fairness of J.P. Morgan acquisitions of Bear Stearns. The deal involved a bailout of Bear Stearns creditors through the Fed. So Blackstone is the one deciding it. Uh, and there's more. So the lead negotiator of the deal, the president of the New York Fed at that time, is Geithner. And he is a former employee of Kissinger Associates. <laughs> and he was appointed to the Fed by Peter Peterson of Blackstone. See, of it's course. just a big circle. <laughs> Aren't these webs fun? <laughs> and the webs just keep going and you're like, where the hell do I cut this off? To tell the story? <laughs> it's crazy. No, and then it goes back to the original. It goes back all circles all the way back around. So Geithner was an employee of Kissinger Associates. When it was in discussions with a merger with BCCI, one of those banks who was indicted for drug money laundering during the Iran-Contra. So God. <laughs> all goes around in a big circle. <laughs> so anyways, I just wanted to expose Epstein's small part in a much larger criminal syndicate. And it's not just about honeypots. It's not just about pedophilia. It's right. about drug money, gun money, you know, laundering that money through financial institutions. So bank fraud, sell, shell companies, etc. cetera. And mm -hmm. Epstein's got little parts and little roles throughout that whole story. Right. And yeah, well, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's more that, uh, more industries and shit that Epstein is connect to anyway. Oh yeah, there's webs everywhere. Good work mm -hmm. on that. Edge. Yeah, that was an awesome dig, Edge. Hey. Thanks. I'm very impressed with that. You've been listening to a special segment of Dig It with Corey Stiggs, the speaker, and myself, the Sharp Edge. Please click the link below in the description for the full podcast. As always, be sure to share, like, subscribe, and hit that bell. We'll see you back next time right here on Dig It. <laughs>